Are you doing a home addition, building onto your home in some way? In today's video, I want to talk about some of your options as far as the HVAC equipment that maybe you haven't thought about. First, let's talk about some of the different types of additions out there. Maybe you're building on just a bump out to the house, a very small addition. Maybe you're doing a whole nother part of the house, maybe a mother-in-law suite or a bonus room. Maybe you're doing a garage, some sort of attached garage. Depending on what you're doing might play a role in a lot of your decision making as we move forward going through some of these things. First, what is the timeline of everything? What I mean by timeline is, are you planning on building again? When are you going to build on? These are some things that you need to think about as far as the long-term ramifications. Some examples I can think of is we've gotten calls from homeowners that'll say, hey, I want to replace my existing heating and air system and I plan to build onto the house. So I want to go ahead and size everything for the addition. And sometimes we talk about the pros and cons of that. Maybe the heating and air company might want something in writing saying that you're not going to hold them responsible if something is wrong because you don't build onto that house because the system is now oversized for the space that they installed it in. And answering the question of, is this it? Are you going to build one again in the future might also play a role in all of this. You might install a system that you can add to. Maybe you do a multi-zone mini split. We did that one time for someone and you know he already knew that he was going to eventually want to add more mini splits. We were able to install a system that would accommodate for that. But the most common one I would say that we receive is folks want to add to their existing heating and air system the addition. So they want to just run a couple ducts over, depending on how large the new addition is. And sometimes that makes sense, but a lot of times it doesn't. If the existing system system is sized for the space that it heats and cools, adding on just a small area can sometimes make a big difference. Now the system is undersized for the space, struggling to keep up, and you have a situation where now the system just can't keep up with the entire home. So maybe if you were to replace the system to account for that addition, there's a few other things you might want to consider. Another one might be, what's the shape of the ductwork? What's the age of the existing system? If it's not that old, it might not make sense monetarily to go replacing all of this stuff. If the ductwork is in really bad shape, then maybe you replace all the ductwork anyway. And even, let's say, that it all, it's, it's a perfect scenario that the system that's there, it can accommodate for the addition. Let's say the ductwork is in good shape. One thing you should know is just because the system's in good shape and the system can cover that new addition, it's large enough to be able to accommodate all of that. Now the ductwork sizing plays a role in all this. The HVAC company might have to reconfigure some things. Maybe the trunk line might have to be larger in one way or another and reconfiguring that again, it's not always just as simple as, oh, let's run a few ducts off of the existing line. I have seen that and then folks have other parts of their home that suffer. If I've got a trunk line that can only supply around 400 CFMs to a certain part of the house, and that's where you bring your ducts off for the addition, that trunk line is still the size that it is. It can only push a certain amount of airflow. And so those other parts of the house that are also coming off of that 10 inch or whatever size trunk line that can only supply 400 CFMs, now you're having a velocity issue because you just pulled ducts off of there. Another scenario we see a lot when folks are building an addition is they look at mini splits. And I would just also say that I think mini splits are great. They serve a great purpose. They do some really good things when they're installed properly. But I would just caution you to say, hey, just realize you are now adding more heating and cooling to that house. You want it to be sized properly as well. I have seen scenarios where folks will add a mini split to a bonus room thinking it's oversized for that space, but it's, you know, I've, I've got it connected to the rest of the home. So it's okay if some of the heating and cooling ends up in the rest of the home, not realizing they could be creating quite a pickle, especially for you folks that are in humid areas. Next, let's talk about zoning. There are ways that you can add on to the existing heating and air system, but you might want to add a whole nother zone. You might want to put a thermostat in that area for one reason or another. We had a customer that we did that with and they had a mother-in-law suite separate from the house and we ran return and supply vents over to that part of the house and we found out really quickly that we needed to zone all of that. We needed to install their own thermostat over there so they could control the temperature in that space. And that brings up our next point, which is 
being able to physically get things to this new space. That might play a role in all of this. You've got to physically get ductwork over there. You've got to physically be able to run a thermostat line over there so you can hang your thermostat. Or if you can't, then you might have to do a wireless thermostat. Understanding that you've got to physically get things to where they need to go might play a role in, if nothing else, how you build your addition. Another thing that might play a role in all of this is what utilities are being used and what makes the most sense efficiency wise. Sometimes adding that mini split to the addition might make way more sense efficiency wise than just running ducks over there because now you're using your much larger system. You've now added another zone, but even if the new space is small, you now have more load. That large system that uses lots of utilities, lots of gas or electricity, is now running more than it was before. Another thing I'll point out is codes. There are building codes and HVAC codes that play a role in all of this. If you're building a garage, you can't come off of your existing heating and air system. By code and common sense should tell you, adding ducts to that system into the garage is a huge safety problem. And finally, today's technology might play a role in all of that. I've had customers say to us, hey, I want to just come off the existing system because of adding another system, the one that's here is loud enough, not realizing that today systems are super quiet. If you go with a an inverter communicating system, such as the Daikin Fit, which is one of the systems we install, we did a whole video where we showed how quiet it is compared to other single stage systems today. Check out that video if you haven't seen it, I'll put it down in the description. But today's technologies might be able to play a role in all of this, especially when you're talking about some of the inverter systems, some of the mini split systems, and some of the wireless capabilities that are out there today. Consider your options, get multiple quotes, get multiple opinions if needed, and I'll wrap up just by saying, does it even make sense to come off the existing system? Does it even make sense to do it one way or another? Ask those questions while you're getting your opinions. There may be something you haven't even considered that might be the best option. So that's it in a nutshell. Let me know your thoughts. Did I miss something? Something that you maybe considered in the addition of your home. I'd love to hear about that. Comment down below. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about the three top secrets that heating and air guys don't want you to know. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.